Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3627, the Kyla Davenport Child Protection Act of 2013. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union Calendar Number 206, H.R. 3627, a bill to require the Attorney General to report on state law penalties for certain child abusers and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Collins, and the gentleman from New York, Mr. Jeffries, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and to include extraneous materials on H.R. 3627 currently under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. The bill under consideration today the Kyla Davenport Child Protection Act of 2013, is named after a young girl from North Carolina who was brutally beaten by her stepfather just last year. Her stepfather was charged with felony child abuse and awaits trial. Kyla, who was only three years old at the time of the attack, will face a lifetime of brain damage and paralysis at the hands of someone who is supposed to love and protect her. Stories like Kyla are absolutely tragic, but they are not uncommon across our country. Approximately 3.5 million cases of child abuse involving 6 million children are reported every year in the United States. In my own state of Georgia, there were over 37,000 reports of child abuse and neglect, with over 15,000 substantiated incidents of abuse in 2009 alone. And the rates of child abuse are even higher in Indian country, where Indian children experience child abuse at a significantly higher rate than the rest of the population. Adding to those in these tragedies is the fact that child abuse cases are not always reported and oftentimes not prosecuted with the same vigor as other crimes. Studies have found that charges are less likely to be filed against perpetrators in child abuse cases than most other felonies, and these cases have lower incarceration rates than other crimes. H.R. 3627, introduced by Mr. Pittenger of North Carolina, will help draw attention to the how child abuse cases are handled across the country by requiring the Justice Department to issue reports on criminal penalties for child abuse in the 50 states, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. territories. This report is focused on state statutes because most child abuse cases are handled at the state level. However, there are parts of the country where the federal government has increased law enforcement role, such as in including Indian country. H.R. 3627 helps to strengthen the federal response to child abuse and other forms of domestic violence in Indian country and the special maritime ter and territorial jurisdictions by amending 18 U.S.C. Section 117 to allow prior convictions of, for the abuse of a child to trigger the offense of domestic assault by a habitual offender. This is a small but important change to the statute that will permit the federal government to prosecute more violent offenders. I commend the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Pittenger, for drawing attention to the terrible crime of child abuse and encourage my colleagues to support this legislation. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Georgia Reserves. Gentleman from New York. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield myself this time as I may consume. Uh, the gentleman is recognized. Today we rise to consider H.R. 3627, uh, the Kyla Davenport Child Protection Act of 2013. This legislation is part of the continuing effort to stamp out the scourge of child abuse in our society. According to the organization Child Help, each year there are more than three million reports of child abuse in the United States. At least six million children are impacted on an annual basis. Every day, an average of four to seven children die in this great country as a result of child abuse and neglect. And more than 78 percent of reported child fatalities resulting from abuse and neglect were caused by one or more of the victim's parents. We must do everything in our power to change this sad reality. Our effort, of course, must be comprehensive and should include both robust criminal justice enforcement and parental education and prevention efforts. In other words, our approach should be balanced. Those who abuse children must understand that the consequences connected to their criminal behavior will be significant. We must also aggressively take steps to prevent child victimization before it occurs. In doing so, we can mitigate the severe trauma of child abuse and simultaneously channel precious taxpayer resources away from the criminal justice system. H.R. 3627 requires the Attorney General to issue a report 
regarding the penalties for violations of laws prohibiting child abuse in the 50 states, the District of Columbia, and U.S. territories. This report must consider, of course, whether those laws provide enhanced penalties when the victim has suffered serious bodily injury or permanent or protracted loss or impairment of any mental or emotional function as occurred in this tragic case referred to in North Carolina. This reporting requirement is a good step toward helping Congress accurately evaluate the statutory landscape in the child abuse context and govern in a more informed fashion. In addition, the legislation permits prior convictions for assault, sexual abuse, or serious violent felonies to be used to trigger additional penalties for habitual domestic abusers on Native American reservations and in special maritime and territorial jurisdictions. This trigger will better protect potential child abuse victims from repeat offenders. For the above reference reasons, I urge my colleagues to support this legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from New York reserves. Gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd like to recognize the author of this legislation, a uh, gentleman who has a great passion for this issue, the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Pittenger, for as much time as he may consume. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Collins. I rise today on behalf of precious Kyla Davenport, a sweet little girl at the age of three years old, was taken by her caregiver and bashed her head against the wall. As a result, Kyla has suffered irreparable damage to the extent that at this point she is immobile and she's paralyzed and has suffered severe brain damage. You can see pictures right here of Kyla, a young girl, and then the next day the condition that she's in. She's made some progress. Her family's encouraged. They assist her 24-7. It's changed their lives. But to the credit of the Davenport family, they wanted what occurred to their child to make sure that that never happened again. And they focused their intention and their efforts, their commitment to passing a law in North Carolina where I live. And now we have a statute that gives a minimum sentence of 10 years to anyone who's convicted of this type of egregious child abuse. Prior to this time, the minimum sentence for such an abuse was four years, maximum six years. This type of severe cruelty warrants a, a measure of sentencing commensurate with what has been enacted. And so I congratulate my colleagues whom I served with at one time in the North Carolina Senate and House, Senator Tart, Senator Tucker, Senator Curtis, House members Horn and Arp, for the leadership that they gave in North Carolina and provided what will be, I truly believe, a real model for the rest of the country. Because, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the Kyle and Davenport Child Protection Act is to give a basis for other states appealing to them through their attorney generals to issue these reports, the first one in six months, the next one three years following, of their current statutes on child abuse and their sentencing. We have found in many states that there are very minimal and lax sentencing. In the South, there's one state <clears throat> that it's a, a year and a day could be the maximum sentence. One state in the Northeast is seven years. One state out West is five years is the um, max sentence. This shouldn't be. We feel like there's many states who, once they understand uh, how limited the scope is of their sentencing that they would want to change it. And yes, Mr. Speaker, I do believe that these types of bills are better addressed in our states. I believe that other states will take the proper action as North Carolina did. And as I have consulted with law enforcement and, and with judges who handle child abuse daily, 
Uh, that's why I introduced H.R. 3627, which is a bipartisan legislation that will address this severe need to make sure that children in the future are not harmed in the same way. This bill will ensure that those who suffer serious bodily injury, mental and emotional disparity in function, uh, would be addressed uh, with the types of sentencing that would warrant the type of crime committed. I believe, Mr. Speaker, that as we enact this bill, that we will see a tremendous impact throughout the country to, pre to prevent this type of scourge from occurring again. So I, I commit it to our Congress. I thank the great support of the members uh, to make sure that this bill is enacted. I thank Senator Burr for his leadership in the Senate, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from North Carolina yields back the balance of his time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we will reserve. We have no other speakers, if you're ready to close. Gentleman from New York. Yes, I have no additional speakers and prepared to close. Let me just simply say I commend uh, the gentleman from North Carolina for putting forth this measure in the House and helping to shepherd it, uh, hopefully, into swift passage and then into law. Uh, and I also commend the Davenport family for their courage, their strength, their perseverance, and wish them Godspeed uh, as it relates to the recovery of their child moving forward, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New York yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Georgia. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just in closing, again, it is good to, to be with my friend down here, and also the bill that Mr. Pittenger is bringing forward is also common sense legislation. I think that strengthens our homes, strengthens our families, and addresses an issue such as child abuse and the real consequences that the Davenport family are finding, but not just them, but many across our country. And with that, I'd urge all my colleagues to support this legislation. With that, I yield back. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass a bill, H.R. 3627? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chairs, two-thirds being in the affirmative, rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table.